strolling through major Chinese cities, be it top-tier ones like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, or second-tier cities like Wuhan, Jinan, and Tianjin, one might stumble upon patches of low-rise haphazard settlements amidst towering skyscrapers, a seemingly abrupt portal to another world. This juxtaposition, termed the urban village, is a curious sight common in almost every city in China. Since late July, the Chinese authorities have initiated a new round of urban village redevelopment projects across major cities nationwide. This has resulted in numerous local residents and tenants compelled to vacate, leaving behind clusters of empty construction. Can you believe what you're seeing right now? Crazy, right? These apartment buildings are just empty skeletons. This is an urban village in Guangzhou City. Many homeowners have already signed paperwork agreeing to demolish their units, and the windows have been torn down. This urban village used to have the highest migrant workers' traffic. As the Guangzhou authorities had decided to demolish and rebuild these buildings, all migrant workers had to leave. Migrant workers have been kicked out, and even the local residents have nowhere to call home. These empty building skeletons just stand there, untouched and neglected. ET people out of these soon-to-be-demolished buildings, the main entrances are all sealed up. As for the units where owners have agreed to demolish, who knows when they'll actually be torn down, let alone hope for new homes to be built in the next decade or so. Nowadays, you see the word demolish everywhere in Guangzhou. Demolish, demolish, demolish. Migrant workers are chased away. Factories have to relocate because of it. More than half of the people have gone, and things will never be the same again. With a series of related policies released by the government, some market analysts have dubbed this initiative as the second shantytown renovation. Back in 2015, China's initial shantytown renovation led to a surge in housing prices throughout the country. Consequently, the current shantytown renovation has garnered significant attention. Some media outlets even suggest that, in Shenzhen alone, the shantytown renovation might mobilize investments in the trillions of yuan, potentially rejuvenating a stagnant real estate market and perhaps igniting another property investment frenzy. So, is this truly a sequel to the 2015 shantytown renovation? Why has the Chinese authorities chosen now to renew its focus on urban village revamps? Can this lift the heavy responsibilities of reviving the real estate sector? Today, we delve into a distinctive urban feature unique to China, the urban village. To many observers, urban villages appear as scars on the cityscape, characterized by their disorderly environment, concerning security issues, and apparent safety hazards. Their uniquely narrow alleys, colloquially referred to as a seam of sky, windows are so close that they could almost kiss, whimsically termed kissing buildings or handshake buildings, and perpetually shadowed rooms, seems oddly out of place amidst the nearby modern skyscrapers. However, for others, especially the migrant workers newly arrived in the city, these urban villages are essential havens. Offering affordable housing, services that match their income levels, and social connections with hometown acquaintances, these villages provide a sustainable platform or starting point for their urban endeavors. When you first get to Guangzhou, you might be like, whoa, whoa, what on earth is this? This is what they call urban villages in Guangzhou. For newcomers, I'd say keep your expectations in check. You've got to keep your ears open and eyes peeled to make it in such chaos. This is the vibe in the urban villages. Can you handle this? These are the handshake buildings, a common sight in many of Guangzhou's urban villages. Urban villages have become to symbolize a particular era in China's post-reform surge of rapid economic growth urban expansion, and swift population urbanization. During China's brisk urbanization process, cities expanded relentlessly. Local governments had an increasing appetite for rural land, aiming to convert it for urban development. Consequently, some villages found themselves enveloped within urban planning footprints. The land these villages stood upon, predominantly residential plots owned by farmers, not only skyrocketed in value due to urbanization, but also became entangled in complex property rights and relocation issues. 
From a government perspective, acquiring actual farmland, given its cost and low acquisition overhead, provided more land value for investment. As a result, the valuable residential plots owned by farmers are left behind, dotting cities as urban villages. For the generations of villagers who resided on these plots, the loss of their farmland translated to the loss of their primary source of income. Also, with their residential lands designated as secondary market land plots by the government, and no legitimate avenue to monetize them directly, the local farmers can only profit from renting these houses out because of the unparalleled location advantage of these plots. Indigenous residents have transformed their ancestral lands into dense housing complexes, which they then lease out to workers based in or around the village. This model has been a primary source of income for them. Under this arrangement, villagers often construct buildings haphazardly to maximize rental space, leading to the emergence of unique architectural designs referred to as kissing buildings and handshake buildings. Taking the well-known urban village Shipai Village located in the heart of Guangzhou's Tianhe District as an example, this compact area, spanning just 0.73 square kilometers, astonishingly houses over 100,000 residents. The tightly packed structures and labyrinthine alleyways have earned it an almost mythical reputation, often dubbed by outsiders as a world unto itself. Preliminary estimates suggest there are around 3,500 buildings in Shipai Village. Some say, don't look down on that old man selling 12 yuan meals. You never know, he probably owns not just 10 apartments but 10 entire buildings. Each of these buildings stands 7 stories high and contains over a dozen units on each floor. In the land-scarce city of Guangzhou, where owning even a single apartment is a luxury, owning several buildings signifies immense wealth. This immense property ownership is likely why many developers have failed to redevelop the area. When social media and self-media bloggers interviewed indigenous residents about their views on potential relocations, the consensus was telling. Tearing down their property might provide a hefty sum, but if the future generations mismanage the windfall, the money could disappear quickly. By retaining their properties, they ensure a steady monthly income, and thus, most residents are against relocation. Shipai Village's unique layout has led to an intricate network of roads. It's not uncommon for longtime residents or newcomers to the city living in the village to get lost. There have been instances of people stepping out for a meal and struggling to find their way home. For rookie food delivery drivers, navigating Shipai Village can be a nightmarish challenge. During peak meal hours, pinpointing a customer's exact location is a trial in itself. Once located, maneuvering through alleys that barely accommodate two bicycles side by side while ensuring timely delivery is yet another challenge. With its significant migrant population, Shipai Village is a microcosm of the city. It houses everything from fresh markets, supermarkets, pharmacies, hair salons, clothing stores, and more. Both local and exotic cuisines can be found, and the melding of regional dialects creates a rich tapestry reminiscent of a concentrated slice of China. In Shipai, residents rarely need to step outside the village boundaries to meet their daily needs. Importantly, while the village is located in one of Guangzhou's prime districts, the rent here can be as low as half or even a fifth of what standardized apartments in the city demand. Shipai Village has therefore become a secure haven for many migrant workers. For countless young Guangzhou drifters seeking their fortunes, it's the launchpad of their dreams. Ding Lei, the founder of NetEase, one of China's top internet portals, once remarked that during his early days as a university graduate, he resided in this village. In his eyes, Guangdong province has always been a land of immense opportunity. He fondly recalls, Guangdong embraced me, gave me opportunities, allowing his entrepreneurial aspirations to flourish. Now, the fate of Shipai Village in the face of the latest round of urban village renovation remains uncertain. We're unsure of what the future holds for it and in what form it might continue to exist. 
Not far from Shipai Village lies another urban village, Xian Village, which has been in the process of relocation for eight years due to issues of compensation and resettlement. This village, despite being so close to the heart of Guangzhou, is characterized by half-demolished houses everywhere. Locals have become accustomed to starting their days beside the pile of rubble. The bustling markets mirror the scenes in many urban villages throughout Guangzhou. Yet in their hearts, these villagers are still awaiting the keys to their resettlement houses. In nearly a decade of waiting, some elderly villagers have passed away, while new children have been born. As they watch the prices of the promised relocation houses rise daily, the numbers hold no meaning for them. In contrast, the redevelopment of urban villages in Shenzhen follows a different model. In early June of this year, Shenzhen launched a unified rental redevelopment pilot project in Bai Meng Village, Xili Street, Nanshan District. The project is overseen by Shenzhen's Shen Hui Tong Investment Holding Co Ltd, which is directly under the Nanshan District State-owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission of Shenzhen. The process involves landlords in Bai Meng Village renting their properties to Shen Hui Tong, who will then renovate the properties and rent them out. Some of the renovated properties will be included in Shenzhen's affordable rental housing program. For this unified rental renovation in Bai Meng Village, local government regulations stipulate a contract signing deadline of June 30th, with a deadline for property handover of September 10th, 2023. It's said that the rents in Bai Meng Village are among the lowest in the Nanshan District, with single rooms going for around 900 yuan, and one-bedroom apartments for about 1,500 yuan. Its residents range from workers employed in nearby factories to recent college graduates and ordinary families prioritizing nearby schooling for their children. Due to the unified rental initiative, many have received notices to vacate their homes by a certain date. This rental reform has disrupted the tranquility of Bai Meng Village, and now one can see residents moving out everywhere. Issues arising from this, like school enrollments, compensation, forced relocation, and potential rent hikes, have caused public discontent. Numerous netizens have voiced their frustrations online with comments like, quote, "Shenzhen seems to be pushing frontline workers to the edge." A few years ago, they expelled some factories, and now they're directly driving people out. In a poll initiated by the Greater Bay Area video platform, asking, "Do you support Shenzhen's unified rental of urban villages?", 81% of participating netizens opposed the idea, with only 13% in support. One netizen posted, questioning, "After renting properties at double the rate and subsequently renovating them." Is there a guarantee that rents won't increase afterwards? Where's the money coming from? What the public really wants is affordable housing, not fancy renovations. According to local villagers, Bai Meng Village is merely a pilot. Many more villages are slated for similar rental reforms. Rent will inevitably rise after these changes. It's a classic case of passing the buck. Who will cover the renovation costs? Ultimately, it will be transferred to the tenants. In the meantime, landlords in other urban villages not yet subjected to these reforms have preemptively increased rents, making life even harder for workers already facing potential unemployment. One tenant commented online: "Before the unified rental, a one-bedroom apartment was 1,000 yuan. Now it's skyrocketed to 2,000 yuan." Addressing the grievances of villagers and tenants, the Xili Sub District Office of Nanshan District sent a letter to the villagers on June third. They claimed there was no forced relocation deadline, rents would remain unchanged, relocation subsidies would be provided, and assistance in finding housing, as well as ensuring school placements, would be available. However, specific implementation details were absent. In 2017, Van Ke ambitiously rolled out their Thousands Villages project. After acquiring villagers' homes at slightly above market rents, they renovated the properties and handed them over to their long-term rental apartment brand, 
Port Apartment, for management. The initial plan was to expand into 100 urban villages by 2018, securing close to 100,000 rooms with lease terms of 10 years or more. However, the slim profit margins made the project unsustainable. By the end of 2018, a retreat began. This initiative ended with senior management resignations and a pause in property acquisitions, marking it as a failed experiment. Zhang Jiwen, who led this venture at Wanke's Southern Division, remarked If we don't pause, where would we relocate all these displaced tenants? This year, Shenzhen resumed what's termed as flexible renovation, this time spearheaded by the government. But what Wanke couldn't achieve is equally challenging for the Shenzhen authorities. The pilot renovation in Baimang Village seems set to follow in Wanke's footsteps, likely ending inconclusively. Local media data indicates that Shenzhen's vast urban village housing stock accommodates over 10 million people. Fulfilling 70% of the city's rental demand. For the manufacturing sector, urban villages have helped labor intensive enterprises cut workforce costs, preventing the hollowing out of Shenzhen's industries. In the service sector, these villages provide affordable housing for a vast number of low and middle income workers, effectively reducing the city's cost of living. Urban villages have also lowered the barriers for various talents to move to and stay in Shenzhen, ensuring a constant influx of fresh blood and vitality. Central to achieving all of this is the affordable rent that urban villages offer. If urban villages disappear, places like Longhua Station in Shenzhen and the city streets might see a rise in the number of homeless individuals. This won't enhance the city's overall appearance. On the contrary, it could make life even tougher for some low income workers. Operators caught in this predicament face two dilemmas rising operational costs and governmental price caps. They are confronted with a seemingly impossible triangle catering to the interests of both tenants and landlords, efficiently managing their financial turnover. And meeting the pressing needs of Shenzhen's current industry and urban development. Each aspect is interconnected, but also in conflict with the others. It's almost impossible for operators to meet the demands of every stakeholder alone. For the Shenzhen government to push forward with this renovation project, substantial financial subsidies will be needed initially to cover the rental shortfall. But this is not a sustainable solution. Hence, insiders from the local real estate industry believe that the unified rental reforms in Shenzhen are merely a facade, with no real winners in the end. Some analysts suggest that the Chinese government's push for urban village redevelopment is an attempt to help property developers mired in debt reduce their inventories. The compensation issue related to urban village redevelopment can be addressed using a housing voucher system. These housing vouchers are securities given to displaced residents during property acquisition, allowing them to purchase properties within specified areas and timeframes, often with purchasing incentives. Preliminary data indicates that cities like Qingdao, Hefei, Nanjing, Zhengzhou, and Nanchang have shown support for or are considering using housing vouchers as the primary compensation method in urban village redevelopments. On August 25th, the Guangzhou City Planning and Natural Resources Bureau informed the media that several departments are studying the feasibility of implementing the housing voucher system. In the last round of Shanty Town renovations, the housing voucher system was widely adopted in third and fourth tier cities, achieving good results in reducing housing stock. However, with the financial strain on many local governments in China and increased pressure to reduce new housing inventories, will the reintroduction of the housing voucher system boost local property sales? According to a report by China's First Financial Daily, experts believe that, unlike shanty town renovations, urban village reforms will have limited impact on reducing housing inventories. On one hand, The scale of construction involved in urban village renovations is relatively small. 
On the other, a significant proportion of urban village owners are reluctant to relocate. Moreover, due to tightened financing for property developers, they may be more sensitive to the redemption time for housing vouchers, possibly leading to reduced acceptance of such vouchers. Additionally, with urban village renovations involving a large number of non-resident migrants, the housing voucher system might introduce even more societal challenges.